welcome to Educational. This is Roy. This is Terry. So we are the podcast that talks about all things aging. Uh, hopefully we can provide some help if you are in the age group, as well as for caregivers. And for some of us that want to age well and age better, uh, we um, talk a lot about our personal situations, as well as uh, things that are going on with our families. So, uh, and we also have guests from time to time. And Terry, I'll let you introduce today's guest. Spiro Kaluris is a leading gout diet expert, author, and blogger at goutandyou.com. He's dedicated his life to inspiring people to obtain a healthy lifestyle and living a gout-free life. Called the rich man's disease, gout is considered one of the most painful of the rheumatic conditions and is a rapidly growing problem that afflicts an alarming number of people. It's greatly affected by diet, and those with the disease are often prescribed drugs that need to be taken for the rest of a person's life, the side effects creating additional problems. Spiro, thank you so much for appearing on the show and explaining gout to us. Thank you for having me. Yeah, thank you so much for your time. We've got so many questions. I've got a page full already. But before we jump in too deep, kind of uh, what was your journey? I mean, what what brought you to this space to, uh, you know, to be a gout expert? Well, I'm basically a patient. I've been suffering with gout since the age of uh, mid-20s, 25, 26 years old. Uh Um, And uh, my story goes one night I was out drinking um being young i was at the bar drinking a lot of whiskey that night went home uh and around 3 a.m i got struck by a gout attack in the big toe it was very painful uh i thought i had broken something uh down there maybe and um so i basically went to the doctor the next day and the doctor quickly diagnosed me as having gout i didn't understand what that medical term was like what is gout he says it's something that you get and usually it's for life uh and uh, i confirmed that by doing uh blood work and uh basically my uric acid was very high so he told me you would have to go on uh medication for the rest of your life and uh, that was very hard to a hard pill to swallow right so um I remember that first attack lasted maybe about three weeks. Um, so it was very difficult to go to work, uh, do chores and stuff like that. Uh, and uh, basically, that's where it started. And then I want to learn more about the disease. So uh, as I was doing research on Google, I couldn't find good patient information. It was just medical jargon. So I decided to create a blog and uh, explain the disease and what affects it and what can help it Uh, and uh, basically i took a deep dive into what foods you could eat what foods you should avoid Uh, and that's what my website goutandyou.com consists of basically it's a lot of helpful articles about uh, diet tips advice on lifestyle changes and so on Um, and uh, here we are today yeah interesting um yeah. So if you don't mind, and, and this is for me, I'm well, sure for I'm, me too. I'm sure a lot of people yeah, out there understand, but I had a totally uh, different opinion, not opinion. I had a totally different belief of what gout was. And so maybe the best place to start for everybody would be just start at the beginning. And what is gout and how does it affect us? Uh, gout is basically uh, a form of arthritis. It's okay. probably the most popular form of arthritis and the most painful. It affects about 2 to 4% of the general population. So what happens is uh, everybody has uric acid in their, in their bloodstream. So uh, when you eat certain foods, all foods have purines. Usually meats and dairy have the highest purines, and vegetables and uh, whole grains have the lowest purines. Uh, purines in there so when you eat that uh, your kidneys will break it down and it takes it takes longer and it works harder to break down meat which is higher in purines than vegetables which is lower in purines and that creates uric acid in the bloodstream and when you produce too much uric acid and it doesn't uh, come out from the urine basically you you can't pee it out uh, what happens is it crystallizes in the joints And usually it'll crystallize, uh, it's what we call uric acid crystals, uh, will form in the joint, usually in the big toe, sometimes in the knee, uh, in the ankle, elbow, and so on. And then you'll get an attack, and that's when you get painful inflammation, and you can't use that joint. You can't Hmm. walk, basically, if it's on the big toe, if it's on the elbow, you can't move your elbow. 
uh, that easily. So basically, that's the basic definition of gout. Yeah. Okay. And and does it affect? So it usually starts in the toe, but did you? Yeah. For, for you, did you have? Did you have it elsewhere? Did it spread elsewhere as yeah. well? Yeah. On my first attack, it started in the big toe and then it spread in the knee. So my whole leg was locked. Okay. So I had to use crutches to get around for those uh, couple of weeks. Wow. And then with the medication, it subsided and uh, you get better. So is this normal, a yeah. is this a um, is it a genetic issue? Was it diet that causes it, or what? I guess what yeah. would trigger it in some versus others. So for some uh, sufferers, it's uh, genetic, uh, but for the majority, I would say it's diet related, because the majority of gout sufferers, when they get an attack, uh, will they'll be overweight uh, in eating the wrong foods. So uh, a lot of them, the main triggers of gout is too much red meat consumption or too much protein in general uh, or too much alcohol. That would be the, the number two trigger. Uh, alcohol also raises uric acid levels. Hmm. That has shown that. Uh, and then you could go into seafood. Uh, seafood is another culprit. And there's some other foods after that. But the main top three, I would say, is the meat, alcohol, and seafood. Um, and, and sugar, sorry, and sugar yeah. is up there with high fructose corn syrup. So those foods, kidneys have trouble breaking them down easily. It takes more work, and that raises uric acid levels. So you're more at risk of developing gout uh, through diet. Whereas for myself, I would say my case, my personal case is more genetic. Uh, reason being, I was born with little, little thalassemia, which is a, a blood disorder. Uh, and that affects the kidneys, and maybe my doctor mentioned that that could be the root cause of my uh, case with hmm. gout. So it does, it's not for the majority of people, obviously, but the majority would say it would be diet. Yeah. And when you say f- seafood, is it all seafood? Is it mostly shellfish? No, shellfish, shellfish. exactly. Okay. Shellfish, uh, like crab, lobster, and so on. Shrimp. Shrimps. And, yeah. Has been known to raise your gas level. Studies have shown that, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, and I think, I mean, I think when, when I was younger, um, I had an uncle who I, I think he was a drinker, and and he yeah. ended up having gout. So that's what I yeah. associated it with, and it's just, it. and when when uh, when you said it, it's called the rich man's disease, what, what does that yes. mean, and then what's, what's yes. what are the myths? So the rich man's disease or uh, basically goes back to the kings and queens of England and France. Uh, the aristocracy back then had access to rich foods. So they would be the ones that had access to wine, uh, alcohol, sweets, right? Uh, and, ri- and lots and lots of meat, okay. lots of protein. So they were known to get the gout attacks, whereas the peasants uh, would only eat complex carbohydrates, whatever they would grow in their farm. So a lot of vegetables fruit, uh, whole grains, right? So that's where the term came from. Uh, and that's where it evolved, basically, to the kings and queens who had access uh, to rich foods and rich, uh, lots of alcohol. So, okay, yeah. interesting. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, yeah. and you were, and you said uh, most people get it, you know, 50 and up, but you were in yeah. your 20s. Uh, yeah, for me, it was more genetic. Again. Yeah, but I was overweight as well at that time. I was about 40, 50 pounds overweight. I was eating a lot of McDonald's, uh, having a lot of Big Macs, and yeah. drinking a lot of soft drinks, which is high in sugar yes. and high fructose corn syrup. In combination with my uh, genetic issue with uh, minor thalassemia, I got it gotcha. at a young age. Usually, it's very rare. Well, not rare. I would say a small percentage gets it before. Uh, the age of 40 and then as you get older the the odds are increasing yeah. increases so i guess a, a, a th- something i was thinking about when you say um like um high protein yes so if people are on doing keto if they're overweight and they're trying to do keto get blood sugar down and all of that are, are they running a risk of getting yes. getting it it's not an ideal diet for gout sufferers maybe for somebody else a trainer somebody who trains a keto diet but uh uh, I do have an article that goes into detail on my website on the ketogenic diet. The diet I advocate for gout sufferers is the following. You've got to eat 80% of your daily calories as complex carbohydrates. So that means fresh vegetables, uh, legumes, some fruit, 
uh, 100% whole grain breads, 100% yeah. whole grain rices and pastas, not the white stuff, the brown stuff. Yeah. Because yeah. that breaks down clean uh, in your body and the kidneys uh, don't have a hard time breaking it down. 10% of your daily calories can be protein. So you could have some uh, uh, lean chicken breast, uh, some red meat, not too much. Make sure it's lean. Uh, turkey is good. Fresh fish uh, like salmon or haddock and so on. Uh, but avoid the organ meats, like, uh, avoid the processed meats, and avoid the seafood like uh, lobster, shrimp, and crabs, and so on. Because those meats uh, will raise uric acid uh, much more okay. uh, than uh, the ones I mentioned. And then the final 10% of your daily calories can be uh, in fat. Uh, so again, uh, you could have uh, some dairy uh, like milk, uh, eggs, cheese, butter, and so on. Uh, so you notice the 20% comes from animal-based uh, foods. So that's where the trouble is uh, for gout sufferers. Uh, it's not to eat too much animal-based foods because they're higher, generally higher in purity. So but, plant-based uh, would be? Plant-based is uh, healthier for a gout sufferer. Exactly. Okay. Okay. So if you go to the doctor and you just do a um, like a panel to look at your nutrients, do, do they do uric acid with that or is that something that you would specifically have to ask for to see if yours is elevated uh, you're saying to test uh to do a blood test to yeah. see where your uric acid levels are at? Yeah, yeah i just you, don't know usually the doctor uh the doctor will uh tell you what uh, paperwork to fill out to go do the blood work and then basically they're looking for a uh, uric acid level uric acid level it has to be at six milligram dl so not over that anything over that is high risk uh some people though can have high uric acid not be symptomatic it does occur um but eventually uh they'll pay the price it'll probably get an attack but you want to keep it below six mgdl i would say four and a half and below is even safer yeah uh for, but is, for, for gout. so but is that something that you would specifically have to ask for that test or is that yes basically yes. involved well, with doctor. the normal testing that they do if they're just testing for your nutrient doing a nutrient panel what do you mean by the nutrients? A diet? Well, like, just like if uh, if I go in and tell my doctor to pull yeah. a, a blood panel, he'll look at your cholesterol, the sugar. Yes. Yeah. And I just yes. wondered if uric acid falls in that general yes. test or do you have to yes. ask for specific? Okay. No, no, usually it's in the general. Okay, okay, yeah. good, good. Yeah, because yeah. Yeah, I've just it's never... Com- uh, it's a common test, yeah. I've never... Um, uh, metric. I've just never paid attention to it, but I think, you know, this yeah. next time I certainly will. Next time I ask your doctor exactly yeah. what is my uric acid uh, level at? Uh, he'll be able to yeah. tell you. Yeah. Yeah. But usually doctors won't mention if the, you're not out of range, so maybe that's the case. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and Roy, you don't have to worry about e- eating uh, like the organs or anything like that. <laughs> we yeah, stay yeah, away yeah, from yeah, that. Yeah, I, yeah. I've yeah. tried it. Yeah, I have tried it. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Uh, I tried some liver, oh. that's it. But even that, it's hard to swallow. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. I'll have to tell my dad. He needs to check because he... He him likes and, that stuff. <laughs> him and his buddy, every Wednesday, they went to this cafe that they served liver and onions. Oh. And then I uh, was like, oh, oh I, 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 well, I was a kid at the time. And when I would be with him, I'd take my sack lunch and have my peanut butter sandwich because I, I couldn't eat that stuff. I couldn't even, <laughs> I can't even smell it. It's yeah, disgusting. It's yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what about the pain? Um, you know, you said that you had to, it, it took you out of work. You had to use crutches. But I guess kind of if you could describe the feeling so maybe somebody could uh differentiate if it's you know gout versus just you know stump their toe on the uh, bed post at night yeah so gout is probably uh probably the most painful they say um it's like you stubbed your toe but it's continuous pain it never goes away <laughs> okay so you're limping a lot um when you get in the big toe uh, what I suggest gout sufferers do to relieve some of the pain is they could um, soak it in uh, warm water a couple of times a day with some Epsom salt, uh, and that should remove some of the inflammation. Um, you could even ice it if you want. Uh, I've done that. It helps temporarily. Uh, but the best would be to take some ibuprofen, some Advil, okay. uh, and then you could walk around. It makes the pain more bearable, I would say. Uh, until you go see a doctor, and usually when you get a painful attack, they'll prescribe you a medication called colchicine, uh, which works really fast. Uh, you take it a couple times a day, and within a couple, two, three days, you could be, uh, the pain is almost gone uh, for most. Um, so, yeah, it's 
I would say it's very painful. I've had it in the knee. When you have it in the knee, your knee becomes like a big inflamed tennis ball. Uh, and it basically locks. So there you would have to use crutches. I've never had it in any other joints, though. So I wouldn't yeah. be able to say for elbows, fingers. Uh, well, if it's in so. your in your toe, and I'm just trying to gauge the, the pain threshold, is it like just a throbbing, like, oh, I, I feel something? Or is it like one of those debilitating oh, no. pain, like I just can't take it anymore? It's like somebody stabbed your big toe. Oh, oh yeah. wow. It's continuous. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really inflamed, yeah. It's so sensitive that you can't even put a bed sheet on it while you sleep. Oy. Oh my gosh! Even that is heavy enough for that. Uh, yeah, for your toe. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And so, what kind of um, what what could you do? Like if if you're having an attack and it's you know middle of the night or whatever, is there anything that you could take uh, naturally? Is there like something that you could? I would say Advil ibuprofen will work the best. Uh, I always recommend that, well, uh, if you're a gout sufferer, you should have colchicin at home because if you get an attack, you just grab that right away. And uh, that's, and that's an anti-inflammatory, quicker. is that what that is? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Even Benjamin Franklin, who had gout, uh, used to import, or when he traveled from Europe to uh, back to the U.S., he would bring the colchicin plant with him because he had gout, and that is what Colchison is based out of, is from the Colchris plant. Hmm. Okay. And that's how he would treat himself with his uh, bouts of gout. Ah, okay. uh, interesting. Yeah. So what about water intake? Um, I know that that has a lot to do with yes. helping flush stuff out of our system. Can, is that kind of a is yes. dehydration a part so, of that? or? Yes. So I recommend gout sufferers drink lots and lots of water, usually go to 12 cups a day. Uh, Because that helps to flush out excess uh, uric acid levels, and it helps the kidneys function better and excrete that uric acid, definitely. Yeah, that's a key point uh, for gout sufferers is to always be well hydrated. And if they're not, uh, especially on hot days, uh, that could be a gout trigger. You could get an attack if you don't drink enough water and it's hot. And And uh, stay away from sugary drinks, soda pops and stuff like that. Exactly, yes, exactly. So what you um, uh, you say that you can set it off? So I guess is this something that's always going to be underlying for you, and that you if you manage it through your diet um, and lifestyle, you can probably prevent it. Or do you know? Does it something that just will sneak up on you and just attack you? You know, when you least expect it, or maybe you ate a little something you know that you didn't understand exactly what was in that what you just ate and it just sets it off well if you're already a gout sufferer i recommend uh that uh, the ideal gout diet which is eight percent complex carb carbohydrates 10 percent protein 10 percent fat what you want to do is control it and maintain it you you don't want because i I know some gout sufferers they'll take allopurinol which is the medication that controls uric acid but keep eating lobster and drinking alcohol and red meat. And what the, what does that do? It worsens your condition over time. Uh, and what the doctor will do eventually is raise your allopurinol uh, medication uh, each time from, let's say, 300 milligrams to 400 and then 500 and 600. So you're worsening your health uh, doing that. So try and stick to a more disciplined diet um, that I advocate uh, on, the, on my website and the book. And uh, if you're not a gout sufferer already, uh, I mean, yeah, you could. I recommend you you eat well, uh, a good balanced diet. Try and avoid that Western diet of uh, too much red meat, too much alcohol, uh, and too much sugar. Yeah. So on your um, on your website, I was looking at the a couple of your titles that were interesting. Uh, the first one was gout and garlic. Yeah. I just want. It was, How does garlic? Yeah, yeah. Is garlic supposed to be. Uh, healing or does it make it worse helps to well liver and kidneys work together when they break down foods and purines so garlic helps to cleanse the liver um which makes it function uh better oh cool uh so that's the main benefit there uh, okay for garlic yeah Yeah, we eat plenty Uh, of garlic so (laughs) and there are are there any other herbs and and things like that for gout i would say celery seeds are good Uh, celery seeds uh help you to urinate more uh, so you flush out more uric acid. Okay. Uh, after that, uh, you got turmeric, which is uh, yes. a great spice. Uh, you could have uh, ginger uh, as well, which helps with inflammation. Um, uh, cherries are very popular with gout sufferers. There's been a study that it shows 
to lower uric acid. Hmm. Um, so that's why uh, a lot of uh, gout sufferers will buy tart cherry extract, usually as a supplement, or eat a lot of cherries during the summer and so on. Um, there's some other superfoods um, for gout sufferers. Bromelain, which is found in pineapple. Mm -hmm. Again, that helps with uh, inflammation. Um, dandelion, uh, dandelions help with the liver, um, to cleanse the liver and the kidneys. Um, basically, foods like that. So, uh, Shanka Priedra, which is another herb, uh, helps to cleanse the kidneys. Anything that helps to really help the, the liver and the kidneys yes. is beneficial for gout sufferers. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and, and uh, you know, we're taping this in uh, late September, so Thanksgiving's on the horizon. People are thinking about that, and I noticed oh, that you yeah. have an article about that, gout and Thanksgiving. Yes, yes. Yep. Yeah, so I get a lot of emails around Thanksgiving time of people uh, getting their first gout attacks asking <laughs> for advice. <laughs> right. So that's why um, that holiday is very dangerous uh, for a lot of people because they eat a lot of protein that day. Okay. Uh, they drink a lot of alcohol, and then that night they'll get their gout attack and contact me for advice. So uh, watch out during Thanksgiving. Do not overeat. Do not overdrink. That's the only advice I can give you uh, not to get your first gout attack. And it, is it prevalent uh, for men, women, um, different mostly races? Men, yeah. yeah, mostly men, yeah. Uh, I would say 75%, 25 women. Women have uh, the hormone est uh, estrogen that protects them until menopause. After menopause, they're at a higher risk. Um, okay. The, the percentages of women getting gout increases. Huh. Um, and for, um, for races, yes, there's studies that shows African-Americans are more prone to get gout, uh, compared to Caucasians. Um, there's some other parts in the world where there's higher incidence of gout. I would say, um, uh, Papua New Guinea, I think New Zealand, uh, the natives there, they're known to have, uh, to uh, get a lot of gout. And I think it has to do with their diet, which is more high protein. Yeah. Uh, just like the natives here, it's a lot of high protein, um, and a lot of studies show uh, they don't balance well with complex carbohydrates, fruits, and so on, vegetables. So, yeah, uh, yeah I would say that. And with the African Americans, right, uh, they're known to eat more protein as well uh, in their diet, so that could be uh, a reason why. Okay. So, what about uh, exercise? Sedentary versus exercise? Does exercise help to? Uh, Maybe yeah, help. Well, maybe not help with the onset, but help us not get it. Or does it help once you have the it onset helps to control it? Yeah. yeah. So exercise uh, will help control uric acid, uh, and it helps to obviously strengthen the joints. So if you got gout attacks in the past, it weakens the joints. So you need to do some type of resistant training, some weight training, like I do. Uh, to help rebuild uh, the cartilage, the joints, and so on, and re-strengthen the bones, and so on. So uh, if you're a gout sufferer, I strongly recommend. Uh, and you also want to keep your ideal weight. That's another important factor. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you don't want to be overweight, so you want to uh, basically uh, add that lifestyle factor of exercise. If you don't want to go to the gym, you can walk every day at least half an hour, 45 minutes, do 10,000 steps. Yeah. Do something that... Uh, helps uh, the heart, uh, the body, uh, so on to control uric acid. So it's funny, this is sounding, um, it's sounding a lot like uh, diabetes. And so I'm wondering, what is there a correlation between gout yes. and diabetes? And uh, I mean, because it kind of starts in your, uh, in your kidneys as well. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So uh, diabetics are higher risk of developing gout and gout suffers too are a higher risk of developing diabetes. I would say it's probably the most popular um, um, risk out there for for both. Uh, so uh, again, it's connected to sugar. Uh, and there are a lot of studies lately coming out that sugar, high fructose corn syrup and all that um, is a probably a more important factor than we think uh, for triggering gout. Um, so again, I recommend uh, you you consume 25 grams a day of sugar around uh, instead of the recommended 50, 52 grams, I believe, from the World uh, Health Association um, or our World Health Organization. And um, it's something that you need to keep track of because uh, it's very dangerous uh, for either diabetes or gout. So yeah. 
uh, if you have either condition, you're at risk of uh, developing uh, the other condition. So uh, do tread carefully with sugar. Yeah. Yeah. You have to watch out for a lot of things as you age. Yeah. As you age. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean. What about artificial sweeteners? I know sometimes we uh, we make the switch yeah, from this... regular Coke to diet, but then they yeah. say that the artificial sweetener, it can trigger as bad or worse than regular sugar. It can. There's not enough studies on that yet, but I would stay away from them. Um because it does change your metabolism, the way you metabolize foods and your system and all that. Um, and it's artificial, so I would st- stay out of them, but there's no proof yet that it triggers a gout attack. Okay. So for that reason. Uh, well, and I will just say from my own experience, the last uh, couple weeks, uh, you know, I'd been struggling with my blood sugar previously, and then I have really, well, I, I didn't drink any water, too many Diet Cokes, Got off the Diet Cokes, not even having any, but really up my water intake to, yeah. you know, that maybe 12 to even maybe 14 uh, cups or glasses a day. And it's really helped my blood sugar. And oh anyway, I know there it may not work exactly the same, but that's just something I would suggest is for really... I think rehydrating, making sure we're hydrating and drinking enough. And if you're bigger... Like me, you know, the eight glasses a day may not be enough. I think nowadays they're saying, you know, you really need to base it on your weight as well. So if somebody's out there suffering, just something to try to, uh, you know, flush as much of that uric acid out of your body as soon as possible. Yes. Because believe me, I'm always in the uh, always in the bathroom now. I can't, I can't, <laughs> yeah. I can't, I we can't. have one. It's like a fight. <laughs> Wait a minute. I can't pass up a bathroom anymore. But <laughs> it's made me uh, feel so much better. Uh, it's interesting because I've just never been a water drinker. Don't like it. But uh, I think it's it can really do a lot yeah. of good things for us. The only thing I would say about sugar is it's very addictive. So yes. Yes. It, uh, it increases the pleasure part of the brain there. Um, and, uh, what the key is to basically eat less and less, uh, it's going to take time, yeah. but it's an addiction. So, um, and your, your brain really reacts when it has sugar. So if you feed it less and less, uh, then the cravings uh, slowly disappear. Right. So that would be the key to eating, uh, eating too much sugar. That's an interesting, uh, point you bring up because it's like, uh, I haven't been eating sugar for the last three or four weeks. We've made a very conscious effort to just get away from it altogether because I'm not very good at just eating a little bit. You know, if, yeah. I, if a little bit's good for yeah. you, then if a little bit makes yeah. you feel good a lot, it's even better. And so just yeah. cutting that out, uh, you know, it, it's it has reduced my cravings. I'm not near as... Yeah asking terry all the time to you know bring home a snack or something like that where when you're eating those all the time it's like you just want more and more and more yeah and yeah and it makes you hungry sugar if you consume sugar it makes you hungrier so you want more and you eat more more calories and you increase your weight and i i've gotten i've gotten good at hiding you know my little p you know if i can just i can just have one or two bites and i wasn't always like that but i i can do i'm very lucky yeah, have one, two bites of something you really like, and that takes away the cravings, and you enjoy that uh, one minute of chewing that uh, piece of whatever dessert you love. That's what I yeah. Well, Spiro, thanks so much for taking time yeah. to be with us. It's been yeah, very educational. I, I I have learned a lot. Yes. Uh, is there anything else? Uh, is there Are there any other points that you want to make to the audience before we start wrapping up? No, we had a good conversation. Uh, pretty lengthy. We touched a lot of points. Uh, I think we covered it pretty much good. all. If somebody wants to learn more about Gout, just visit my website, goutinyou.com. Uh, there's over 150 articles yes. uh, there. So on any subject and if you have any questions email me i answer all emails usually within 24 hours okay uh, you can contact me directly i also have a book uh, that you could purchase and uh, learn more about the gout diet um and that's pretty much it. okay yeah. what's what's the name of the book again gout and you the ultimate gout diet and cookbook okay There's about 100 recipes to get you started as well okay um, yeah. Is there a contact form on your website? Do they just need to go over there and contact you? Yeah. No, there's an email uh, on the contact page. Uh, so it's basically info at goutinu.com. Okay. 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 Well, thank you for providing all of this 
just very enlightening information yeah. and just you, yeah. so many things to look out for as you're aging. But this this has been very, um, very beneficial. Yeah. yeah, go over and check Thank the you. website out. There's a lot of great articles. Yes. Like I said, I was just thumbing down through here and you know some of the more uh relevant ones for us because you know we like garlic we cook everything oh, with yeah. garlic so that's interesting but you know there's the gout and sports gout and specialist you know a lot of great information everything you're, yeah. you're covering the gamut yeah. Yeah. all right well again thanks so much that's going to do it for another episode of educational of course i am roy i'm terry and uh, you can find us at www.educational.com. We're on all the major podcast platforms, iTunes, Stitcher, Google, Spotify. If we're not on one that you listen to, please reach out. I'd be glad to add it. We're on all the major social media platforms as well. We tend to hang out on Instagram, so we'd love to interact with you over there. And a copy or a video of this uh, episode will go live on our YouTube channel when the episode goes up. Please check it out as well as some of our past guests. Very informative. So until next time, take care of yourself and take care of your health. 